What's going on everyone? It's Elemental Storm here. This is Top 5 Reasons to Play Bloodborne. So for those of you who don't know, Bloodborne is a Souls-style game <coughs> made by From Software, the original makers of uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls. And uh, it is really, really awesome. So let's get into the top five reasons, and this is one of the reasons I love this game a lot. Well, I should say these are the top five reasons I love this game a lot. So here we go. Okay, so number one, I would definitely have to say, is got to be the setting. The setting is just amazing. Now, I'm a big fan of the Souls series, but I have to say without a doubt that the setting in Bloodborne, this Victorian Gothic style setting that goes from like this Gothic setting to a Lovecraftian setting is just amazing. So that's number one. Let's get into number two. And number two is the weapons. Now, the weapons in this game are really awesome. Now, you don't have a shield like in Souls, but it makes up for it because you do. You can like either do some really high strength hits, you do some damaging on top of this. Now, this is when you get later into the game. You can get some arcane items, like you shoot these tentacles out of your hands. A lot of fun. Um... And you just get all these different kinds of weapons. I have these two blades called the Blades of Mercy. Very much fun. The cane is awesome. Turns to this cane whip. You start feeling like uh, uh, like Simon Belmont from Castlevania. Oh, just so good. So good. Um, and then you could, as you can see here, yeah, here we go. Here's the cane whip, and it's just awesome. I, oh, just so, so good. But there's so many different weapons. Uh, well, I understand say so many different weapons. What they have is they have transformations. So there's not a lot of weapons like in Souls, but... Each weapon has a transformation. So, like, the cane goes from just a regular cane to a cane whip. The blades you can break apart and from a short sword into two double blades. And, yeah, it's just so good the way they designed it and stuff. All right, and uh, number three we're going to get into is exploration. Now, me being a huge RPG fan... And everything along those lines, I love my exploration. I think it's one of the best things when it comes to any type of game, especially when you have like kind of an open world or even hub world settings and stuff like that. Exploration is key, and uh, uh, Bloodborne definitely does not uh, does not stray far away from that. It gives you tons of exploration. The key is really before you even fight any bosses is finding like shortcuts and stuff like that and you have all these different types of like uh, just these looks in these different places that you go to and stuff and they're all interconnected in some way or another so there's just a ton to do a ton to find and some really really cool environments on top of that when you're running around and seeing things and oh it's just it's amazing to me it's just oh it just sells it really and number four is going to be the monsters so the monsters of course in this game are they're designed really, really good. Um, you have like the, the kind of the beast men things you get later on into it. I'm not going to spoil anything, but you get these really funky looking monsters. Uh, you get like the, the, the skeleton looking undead things. You get like these almost things that look like there's something out of Michael Myers with their like white faces and stuff. Uh, snake, snake creatures, like snake, like a ball of snakes. <laughs> Let me throw that at you. Ah, I have a ball of snakes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just the, the creation of the, the creatures in this was really, really well done. I've always loved that about the Souls game, that they take the aspect of either fantasy or, in this case, Victorian horror, and they just go nuts with it. So, and last but not least, number five is definitely the co-op. Now, me, I'm not a big PvP player, uh, but I love helping fellow souls, or in this case, fellow uh, Bloodborne people and stuff like that. So I'll, what you do is you grab your bell and you get a resonant bell. I have a video on that, actually, how to do that. So check that out. But the, the idea behind it is I love being able to just go near a boss area after I've already beaten the boss and go help people that are having problems with it because a lot of people want to play the game and enjoy it but they find the bosses so difficult that they get like smashed around, they get killed and stuff like that you know and some people aren't like elite style players where they're you know they're like you know they're gods at the game and stuff so they want they want a hand and that's totally cool because that's I mean that's what the co-op was made for and um it's just so much fun when you can help someone, and you'll see here at the end as we finish off this boss here, which is a really cool design, by the way. Um, it just the, the factor like this right here, and I, this is one of the key things I love is you never talk to anybody; you just do these movements. Like you can do like there we go, the, the throw your hand up in the air or you bow or whatnot, and it's just so cool. That's like that minimal uh, interaction you have with somebody just for those boss fights of that area, and then you. Go away. So anyway, this is Bloodborne. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys later. Huzzah!
Storm here, and this is the top five reasons to play Transistor. This is a game that just came out on the PS Plus. Uh, it's been out for a little while now, though, but I figured this would be a great video to do since it is on the PS Plus and some people are still, uh, you know, wondering about it and everything like that. So here's your top five reasons. Let's go. Number one we're going to start right off the bat with is the art. Now, the art style or the, the graphic style in this game is just amazing looking, as you can see here. 